Welcome to the Physics Classroom's video tutorial on static electricity. The topic of this video is the electric field concept, and here's what we wish to learn today. What exactly is meant by the term electric field, and how can the concept be used to explain charge interactions? I'm Mr. H. Let's get started. Magnetic forces, gravitational forces, and electric forces are all examples of actions that occur at some distance away. Here's what I mean by this. Consider a projectile traveling through the air. As it does, the Earth exerts a gravitational force upon it, even though the Earth and the projectile are not in physical contact with one another. This is an action occurring some distance away. We refer to these types of forces as non-contact forces or field forces. Here's another example. If you have a charged sphere and you bring a balloon nearby, that charged sphere will exert an electric force on the charges of the balloon, even though they're not in physical contact with one another. Once more, this is an example of an action at a distance, a field force. Forces that result from contact don't necessarily evoke a lot of mystery or surprise because we're accustomed to them, like the force of the seat pushing up on your body, or maybe the force of a baseball in your hand as you catch it, or maybe even the force of the linebacker taking down the fullback in football. These forces are contact forces and they don't typically surprise us, but if you reached out to catch that baseball, and while it was still five feet away, it started to slow down and eventually stopped without ever making contact with your hand, that action at a distance would evoke mystery. Or if you were ever watching a football game, and as the linebacker approached the fullback, but before they actually made contact, if the fullback got knocked over backwards, now that would be mystery. In fact, the first time we see certain experiences in physics class that are action at a distance, we kind of think, hmm, that's surprising. Like maybe it's the force of a charged balloon picking up paper bits from the table. Or maybe it's two charged balloons that have light charge hanging from the ceiling and repelling one another. That might evoke mystery. Or maybe if you used an electroscope in your physics class and you brought a charged balloon nearby it and you notice the needle of the electroscope begin to move, well, that might evoke mystery. What we're going to do in this video is try to explain action at the distance in all of its mystery in terms of a concept called the electric field concept. The electric field represents scientists' efforts to explain action at a distance. Here's the logic of the idea. A charged object, like a negatively charged sphere, alters the electrical properties of the space that surrounds it, such that whenever any other charged object enters into that space, it behaves differently because it feels the effect of the field created by this electric charge. We like to say that the, electric, that the charged object has created an electric field, an alteration of the surrounding space. And when other objects enter into that space, it interacts with the space differently because of the presence of an electric field established by that charge object. A rather crude but useful analogy involves the stinky field created by a soiled or poopy diaper. A poopy diaper is known to alter the olfactory properties of the space that surrounds it. It creates a stinky field that permeates outward to the surrounding space. In every nose in the room, without making physical contact with that diaper, knows that it's in the presence of a stinky field because it detects something different about the space. And the strength of that stinky field depends on two main factors how close your detector gets to the source of stink and how much stink is in that source. We're going to talk more about what the stinky field teaches us about the electric field. The stinky field is a great analogy for understanding the electric field, and here's why. First, it takes a detector to detect this field. In the case of a stinky field, the detector is the nose. And in the case of an electric field, like that created by a negatively charged sphere, it's another charged object known as the test charge that detects this electric field. We think of the detector as interacting directly with the field or the space, not so much with the source. The idea is this, the, the source creates a field and the field affects the detector. Third, 
The strength of the electric field varies inversely with the distance from the detector to the source. In the case of the sticky field, the closer you get to the diaper, the stronger the field. In the case of an electric field, the closer the test charge gets to the source charge, the stronger the electric field. And finally, the electric field depends upon the properties of the source. In the case of a stinky field, it depends on how much stinks in that diaper. And in the case of an electric field, it depends upon how much charge is on that negatively charged sphere. I like to finish every video with an action plan, a series of next steps for helping make the learning stick. But before I help you with that, could you help us out by giving us a like or subscribing to the channel or even leaving a question or comment in the comment section below. Now for your action plan. Here's four resources and each one of these can be found on our website. We've left links to each in the description section below. You have a concept builder, a Minds on Physics mission, an interactive game, and a tutorial page. Any one of these could help make the learning stick. Whatever you do, I wish you the best of luck. I'm Mr. H. I thank you for watching.